right. Now we will see problem two. I will stop the transcription. OK. Good. Now we will uh, discuss problem two. So in problem two, uh, you will be given a matrix multiplication program and you have to analyze the performance with respect to uh, caching, right? So as matrix multiplication is happening, uh, A, B, C are the matrices, and here I show you how matrix multiplication program uh, is written, and this is two-dimensional access, right? So you are accessing matrix A, B, C using row number and column number. In other words, row index and column index. The same thing could be done uh, using uh, one dimensional uh, representation. So in, in the lab problem, you are provided with one dimensional uh, matrix multiplication as well. So uh, A, B, C are 1D arrays and uh, this 2D uh, format is changed to 1D format. So the matrix is N by N. That's why you're multiplying I with N and you're doing that for A, B, C. So you will run this program and see how many cache misses happen. Right. And there are uh, many versions of the program and you will basically measure uh, loads, misses, last level cache loads and misses. So D is for data. So there is L1 cache for data and L1 cache for instructions. Uh, here we are basically interested in data. And I've written uh, rows two times because you can uh, repeat the measurement. Just run it like two times. Uh, change the number of rows and measure the time two times. Now there are different ways to do matrix multiplication and uh, you have to run them. Uh, I have provided you some a sample program and one I have provided the rest you'll write yourself. So I believe I provided IJK. Yep, so in the sample program for matrix multiplication, uh, you will have a matrix multiplication program in using one dimensional syntax, right? And there are, you know, auxiliary functions to do initialization printing the matrix, uh, allocating memory, and then measuring the time, how much giga flops, uh, how many floating point <coughs> operations happened. So, and memory deallocation is there. All right, so this is matrix multiplication. And then the main function is the driver program, which calls matmul. So you will add, uh, uh, two new matrix multiplications corresponding to JKI. This so translate this into 1D version and translate KIJ, this version E, into 1D. And then run them and measure the cache. Uh, how many cache misses happen uh, for level one and last level cache. So that is the program. Uh, I mean, that's what you have to do for the lab. Now, after this, uh, problem one and problem two, what I'm going to discuss is, you know, you will definitely, you know, note down uh, the number of cache misses, cache loads using the perf command, but how to, you know, understand that. Like if you see changes in performance, uh, execution time varying, some version being better than the other, how do you know, you know, why is that happening? Right? Can we analyze it? It turns out the execution time variation is dependent on uh, the cache behavior of matrix multiplication. All right. So what are we going to do now is I'm going to discuss matrix multiplication and how when you're multiplying two matrices to produce a third matrix C, the number of cache misses determines the performance, the runtime. Okay. All right. So that's 
uh, the problem. So you can uh, actually, you know, do this translation, add uh, two new matrix multiplication. I have provided one. All right. Now the rest of the lecture is about how to analyze, how to understand the cash behavior when matrix multiply happens. All right, good. Now there are like two dimensional version and one dimensional matrix version, right? It's easy to understand the two dimensional matrix multiply. So that's why here I have 2D arrays. Uh, calloc is just a function to allocate memory. Uh, the matrix matrix is supposed to be of doubles, right? Like 3.14 double value. Calloc is just like a uh, malloc. It takes two parameters. Uh, you don't need to know know this. We'll just use malloc. Uh, but in I think operating system class, you may see calloc as well. Memory allocation using two parameters. All right. So what does uh, matrix multiply do it has three four loops uh, one is for i that goes through the row uh, the inner loop is uh, here you have j so that goes in a column major order so i goes row wise j goes column wise and then k it goes from zero to n oh this is also two dimensional oh this is also one dimensional version right yep OK, let's see if I have a one dimensional version. Yeah, the second one has one dimension or uh, two dimensional. All right. But you know, the idea is the same. You can access the matrix uh, using one dimension or two dimension. So in order to produce a single output here for C, so let's say this is CIJ. So the index is CIJ for um, you know this element shown over here, right? Uh, you have to calculate all of these output variables in C. It is just showing uh, for a given a row I and column J, uh, you produce that result CIJ by uh, accessing a bunch of elements uh, in the ith row, multiply that with a bunch of elements in the Jth column add them, multiply and then add, and that's how you get CIJ. And also CIJ need, needs to be evaluated because, uh, you know, that's what will produce you and give you the output matrix, all right? So this is the matrix multiplication program. IJK, I times N plus K. So this is row wise because k is increasing like 0, 1, 2, and so on. And i does not change. Uh, I mean, just if you just look at the inner loop. So for a value of i and j, the whole thing, the inner loop runs n times, right? So this is row wise. And since you're multiplying k with n, as k is increasing, 0 times n is the first plus j. Uh, k becomes 1, 1 times n, then you go here. So this is the column wise traversal, right? OK, good. This is another figure that basically shows the same idea. In order to uh, get c, elements of c, you do have to traverse a in a row wise fashion, and you have to traverse the elements of B in a column wise fashion, and that's how you get elements of C, which is the output, right? And. And it shows you how you generate this uh, element of the output by you know, using the same row, uh, but a different column. In order to get this one, you would use this row and this column. In order to generate this output, you'll again have to access these elements, this row and blue column. So the, it is color coded, right? Any output from C, which elements from A and B does it need? So there is a pattern here. All right, so this is the version that is uh, generally written uh, for matrix multiplication. 
we will see in this lecture that this is not the optimal way to write matrix multiplication. So Cij equals to Cij plus Aik Bkj, and there are three for loops, one for loop for i, the other is for j, and the innermost for k. All of them go from 0 to n. It will produce an output matrix, but there are better ways to write matrix multiplication, right? I will see that. All right, so this is again another uh, picture uh, just to show what happens in the matrix multiplication. So in the previous slides, uh, it's not clear which elements get multiplied and how things are getting added, right? So this uh, this slide basically makes it very clear. Uh, so in order to get Cij, that's the output, A and B are the input, you're multiplying A and B. In order to get Cij, uh, you basically have to take the ith row. So that's where these elements are coming. A, I, 1, A, I. Right, so these are coming from here. And you take the corresponding jth column uh, from B. Right, so here you have these elements from B. Right, you multiply them and then finally add add whatever is whatever you get so that gives you cij and this also says that you have n multiplications and uh, addition here but you do have to not only calculate cij but you have to calculate c11 c12 so you have to calculate lots of uh you know cijs and that requires you to read certain row of a and certain column of b so let's assume that a row of a matrix is very big. So that's why you see a dot, dot, dot. So it is possible that if the matrix is very big, you know, 10,000 uh, elements, 100,000 elements, a million elements in a single row, very huge matrix, uh, a row will not fit in the L1 cache. So the innermost cache is in kilobytes. Each element is a double, takes eight bytes. If you have many of them, it is reasonable to believe that the entire row will not fit into the L1 cache, right? So because of that, as you're accessing B1J and go to B2J, uh, when you read B1J, you do get, uh, you know, the adjacent elements because of spatial locality, you know, caching happens and a block is read, let's say four elements get read. Uh, but when you access B2J, there will be a cache miss. There will be a cache miss for B3J, B and J. So you see that accessing elements of A has cache misses, but not that frequently. Uh, for example, when you access A11, you know, you have four elements. So uh, A11 is a cache hit and cache miss because cold cache, A11 is not there, but uh, the cache would read, let's say block size is four, so A12, A13, A14 are read, so there would be hit uh, for A12, A13, and A14, right? So uh, cache miss, like when you read four things, you have only cache miss for the first. So one out of four, so for reading four things, block size being four, there is only one cache miss. Now, as you are, are reading, uh, elements of B, uh, because this is column major, column wise traversal, there is cache miss for each element, right? As you're reading this uh, column, there is a cache miss uh, for all these elements. And the reason is uh, the ma matrix row is big, uh, the whole um, row will not fit in the cache, only a part of it will, uh, will, will fit in the cache. So when you go from B1 to B21, uh, you know, B21 is not there in the cache. So there is cache miss for each axis, right? So this is uh, something that we also saw in, uh, you know, when we were doing matrix addition. So similar concept, right? This is stride one axis pattern, and this is stride P axis pattern. So here you have P things, right? So that's why P, uh, there is a jump by P elements. So accessing elements of A, is 
fast accessing elements of B because it's called a major. It's not that fast. It's actually lots of cache misses happen. That means uh, CPU has to go to the main memory uh, to fetch the data into the cache. So if this is CPU, if this is cache, and this is main memory, uh, when you are uh, reading B, then you know the CPU will look at the cache. It's not there, so it has to go to the main memory and fetch the item, right? So that's a problem. Now carrying on our cache miss analysis. So let's look at uh, you know. Uh, let's build on the previous example. Uh, let's make the cache block size eight doubles. So in the previous example, I assumed four doubles as a block size. Let's assume eight doubles could be read at one shot. Uh, matrix elements are made up of doubles. That is the same. The cache size C is very, very small than the number of rows or number of columns, right? So cache is not that big. So when you're calculating an element of C, let's say C00, then you have to access the elements of A, the row, and elements of B, the column. So this a C00 evaluation uh, would require all the elements in the first row and all the elements in the first column from B, right? So how many cache misses will happen? So if this size is n, uh, you can assume n to be the size here, uh, n by n, so n divided by 8. Uh, because at a time, you can only read 8 uh, at a time, right? So the first one would be a, a miss, uh, but the rest of them would be a hit. Then this one would be a miss, and the remaining 7 would be a hit, and so on, right? So if this is size n, n over 8, uh, is the number of cache misses that will happen while reading A. And uh, for B, uh, there would be cache miss for each axis of, uh, you know, matrix B. So as you're reading B00, B10, B20, B30, uh, you know, uh, you would have uh, lots of cache misses. I mean, cache miss per axis element of B. And the reason is, you know, whenever this is accessed, it, the system will read a block, eight things, but then you're not using those eight things. You just have a stride of size N and you, you're jumping over the elements. So N over eight uh, for accessing elements of A and N uh, for elements of B because each access requires a cache mesh. OK, so if you add these two, you get nine by eight cash misses in the first iteration, calculating C00. All right. Uh, this shows, you know, once C00 has been calculated, what remains in the cache? So because C00, uh, you know, uh, the, the recent items are on this side because you're reading like this. So these are the recent items. So that's what is remaining in the cache. So this is relatively new I, new elements in the cache. And uh, for B, as you're accessing the last four elements, each of this access uh, would you know read eight, eight doubles, eight doubles, eight doubles, right? So that's why it looks like a square. So this is what is left as C00 is calculated, all right? Now go to the second iteration and you see this is now C01 uh, is calculated in the second iteration. So this will also, uh, you know, will read uh, the first row of matrix A, but the second column of matrix B. And once C01 is calculated, cache will have something. And this is the latest uh, elements that would be in the cache. All right, so the cache has limited space, so it cannot hold the entire uh, row or entire column, so it can only hold things that are most recently used, right? So that's what. Now the number of cache misses would be same, n over eight here, 
and n cache misses here. So the same as the first iteration. You can sum them up for all elements of C and how many such elements are there, you know, of C. There is n by n, right? So n square. So that's why you're multiplying by n square and you get uh, 9 by 8 n cube. So that many cache misses happens, right? So this is cache miss analysis uh, for matrix multiplication uh, that has uh, three for loops i, j, k, right? So c i, j equals to uh, a i, k times b, k, j. You multiply them and there is an add. All right, so that was one version. So we will look at other versions of matrix multiplication as well. You may not have seen other versions, but there are other versions that will also produce the same answer. So you multiply A, B, you'll get the same C. Uh, the multiplications will happen in different order. So you have N Q multiplications uh, and additions. Uh, if you have seen algorithms class, so order means, you know, order of N cube. Uh, this is like constant times N cube. How many elements are there in a matrix? N square. Order N square because you know you have three matrices A, B, C. Uh, don't worry about order if you have not. Uh, I assume in data structure class you have seen order already, right? So you should be familiar with order notation in the data structure class. All right, so six versions of matrix multiplications I, I will show you. Basically, I'll show you three. Three is enough. And this is what you'll be relevant in the lab because you'll be implementing them and do the cache uh, timing, right? Now, the important thing is, uh, you know, the elements are accessed many times because if you look closely about, you know, how the matrix multiplication happens, you know, for all of these elements of C, the same row is used, right? So many times the same row is used. But in order just to calculate uh, the first row, the entire matrix B has to be loaded into, uh, you know, into the CPU has to, you know, read all the elements because this requires first column, the second one would require second column, the third one requires third column, and so on. This one would require last column. So the whole matrix is loaded, right? Just for the first row. If you calculate the second row, again, the same story, the whole matrix B is loaded. So it goes into the cache and the CPU accesses it from the cache. All right. All right, so as I as I showed you earlier, you'll be using the perf tool uh, to run a uh, matrix multiplication. So there are three versions, run, run them one by one, comment a version and then run it and the comment the second version of the matrix multiplication and uh, do the perf analysis right so that that is one way to do the uh, perf analysis all right so let's look at uh, the first matrix multiplication program uh, this is called ijk version ijk because you have i and then j and then k all right so what we are going to do is uh, try to do a uh, cache analysis OK. So uh, there are some assumptions uh, before we do. Uh, all right, I, I guess. Uh, all right, yep. So let's just uh, look at this program. Uh, the only difference that you see here compared to the previous code is that uh, instead of directly writing your answer to CIJ, uh, a local variable sum has been introduced here and some gets updated. And finally, when the whole innermost loop has been executed, then you write your answer to CIG, right? So uh, the program is doing the same things just by introducing a temporary variable sum. Um, that's the only difference that you see. And this is a good optimization because a variable that uh, is used many times because of uh, locality, temporal locality this would be in a register so there won't be memory access uh, some compiler uh, will you know when the compiler generates assembly code some variable will be written to a register and then register access will happen uh, memory access happens for a and b 
uh, this uh, slide also shows you, uh, you know, how to think about uh, caches. So, you know, the, the same program, let's say you're evaluating for I equals to one. So C1J, I equals to one, C, C1J plus A1K and BKJ, BKJ does not have a I. So when you're calculating C1J, which basically means first row, uh, then you're accessing, you know, this. So this is C. So first of all, you have a C and then you have a A. This is matrix A and this is a matrix of B. So C is indexed using IJ. So that's why you see I and J. Uh, A is indexed using IK. So you see I and K. B is indexed using K and J. So you see a K and a J. All right. So when uh, C1J is calculated, these are the last elements. Uh, so these are the relatively new elements. Uh, this is a small matrix. So this this is this row is currently accessed and in order to uh, get all this output the whole matrix is loaded uh, but corresponding to these i these three elements like c13 c14 and c15 uh, these uh, elements from b have been accessed right so what this slide shows is is you know what is new what is old so you can basically give an age uh, to these accesses so the darker lines are new white have not been accessed yet because we are doing c1j so the white portions have not been accessed the lightly grayed uh, portion they are slightly older right this is also older so the color coloring scheme is showing the age all right now to do the cache analysis on different versions there are some assumptions so the matrix is made up of um, doubles and the block size is 32 bytes okay so that means four doubles uh, will be uh, four doubles you can store now this is the same assumptions which i basically talked about earlier okay good so uh, let's look at this version, right? JKI. This is different from IJK code that we had seen before. So IJK is the version of where the outermost loop is I, uh, the innermost uh, is K, and the, in the middle you have J. But this is different, right? Uh, but this also produces the same answer uh, for output matrix C. Now, will it be faster than the other one, or will it be slower? Uh, how to uh, predict you know how to calculate that so let's look at uh, what are, what are the data access that is happening so you are reading a so there is a load happening on a and there is a load happening on c and there is also store happening on c because c is being read and also written to because cij plus equals right so uh, you're reading uh, a and c and then writing to c if you look at now cache misses then Let's look at for CIJ. Is CIJ a row major axis or column major axis? So let's look at just the innermost loop. So for our analysis, we can only look at uh, the innermost loop and then make a decision on how many cache misses happen. Uh, in reality, you know, you have to add all of them, but it suffices just to look at the innermost loop and make some. Uh, guesses, uh, some, you know, uh, some calculation on the number of cache misses. So I J, so I is changing. So I zero J, zero J, uh, then C one J, then C two J, right? So as I is changing zero one two, uh, you can see that uh, this is a column major traversal, right? So there would be a cache miss for each axis. So if you look at just one iteration, just for i equals to a number like zero, how many cache misses will happen? So each CIJ is one cache miss. So per iteration, there is a cache miss for each CIJ. Now let's look at uh, AIK. So AIK, right? AIK. So K is outside. So if we fix k to a value like zero, 
then we get a 0 0 a 1 0 a 2 0 and we see that this is also column order traversal. Right, because for the innermost loop, you can fix K to a value and I changes rapidly here. 0, 0 K, uh, 1 K, 2 K, 3 K. So that's column major for A as well. So you will say that, you know, there is a cache miss for A, there is a cache miss for C on on each iteration of I. OK, so this is not good. It'll, it's every axis is a cache miss because they are column order traversals. OK, so you, here we are comparing IJK uh, with JKI, right? So JKI is something that we looked at uh, per iteration. It has two cache misses. Uh, if you look at IJK, uh, you have a data read, data read and the write is happening to register. This is not memory read. OK, so is AIK a row major axis or column major axis? Let's look at that. I is fixed to 0, so A0, 0, 0, A0, 1, A0 to 0, 3. So we can see that the elements of A are being accessed in a row major order. Uh, and elements of B, let's see, is, is it a row major or column major? KJ, so K is changing rapidly, right? So 0J, 1J, 2J, 3J. Yeah, that is column, right? So a column is not good. So each axis of B has one cache miss per iteration of uh, this innermost loop. Uh, but since AIK is uh, being accessed in a row major order, uh, when you're accessing uh, four items because the block size is four. Uh, the first element is a cache miss, right? So how many cache misses uh, for one access? So one over four. So four elements are being accessed. Uh, there is one cache miss. So that's like 0.25, right? So there is a cache miss uh, of 0.25 for A and uh, a one per iteration of B, right? So you have 1.25 axis. So here you had two as number of cache misses for each iteration of I, and here you have 1.25 uh, cache misses for each iteration of a K. So the innermost loop. So that that the the the, the cache miss will tell us that you know I J K would be would perform better than J K. So that's how we calculate. All right. Now the final version. Uh, let's look at uh, how many cache misses here? So CIJ, I is fixed to zero, let's say, or any value, but J is changing. So this is row major order, right? So this is a 0.25 uh, cache miss per access to CIJ because this is row major. This is similar to the previous one. Uh, BKJ, let's see, BKJ. So if you fix K to a value, let's say zero. So B0, zero, zero, B0, zero, one, B0, zero, two. So J is changing. Right, so B is also row major, right? So both are row major. So this will also row major is actually good. So here also you have a 0.25 uh, cache miss per access to an element B. So in total, a 0.25 plus 0.25 is 0.5. So if you compare, in the previous one we had a 1.252, and here we have only 0.5, right? So this has the least cache miss. And that's why this version would perform the best because you know this has a uh, very few cache misses because it's row wise traversal for both C and B. You have one more which would behave the same way. Um, we'll just skipping this one. All right, so this uh, summarizes. Um, uh, you count how many loads, how many stores, but this does not determine the performance. The, the one that determines is the total number of misses that happens when you access element of A, B, and C. So the least number of cache misses you get uh, for KIG and IKG. So this should take the least amount of time. So this uh, our figure also uh, shows you that performance. So uh, the Y axis shows cycles per loop iteration. That means if you take more cycles, Per inner loop iteration, that means it's a, 
uh, more is actually higher is uh, more time because number of cycles means time, right? Cycle a cycle takes some time to execute. So more cycles means bad. So you see that uh, these two versions have performed very well. Kij, ikj, kij, ikj because these have less cache misses. On the other hand, the uh, you know the other two uh, take more time. For example, jki, kji. Right? They take more time. JKI, KJI, JKI, KJI. Right? They have uh, this. Uh, this version has two cache misses per iteration, and in in the middle is what we generally write as matrix multiplication, IJK version. Right? So this is how we uh, look at uh, different uh, matrix multiplication program, uh, and by looking at them, we look at you know how many cache misses are there in the innermost loop and particular particularly in in one iteration just and then count it and that gives us the ability to uh, reason about the performance of the program okay so we'll stop here uh, and you can read uh, you know the re remaining thing that's there in the slide it summarizes you know what i just said all right so i think uh, we are all set to do the lab exercise for problem number 2 so I stop here. Uh, thank you. So I'll stop the recording now.